ready, man? Party people in the place to be. Uh -huh. It's about that time for us to. Yeah. What's up, chiropractors? This is Dr. Nick Silveri, your guide up the mountain to a million dollar practice. If you're looking for the roadmap to grow your practice fast, then keep on listening. This is the Path to a Million podcast where I chat with today's most successful practicing chiropractors. And remember, if you want to get there faster, visit GetMeMoreNewPatients.com to find out more about Leverage Media, the most comprehensive digital marketing agency for chiropractors on the planet. What's up, everybody? This is Dr. Nick with Leverage Media, and welcome to another episode of Path to a Million podcast. I'm here with uh, one of my favorite people in the world, <laughs> Dr. Sebastian Bonin. What's up, the Nick? The man with the unlimited energy. What's up, brother? Uh, man, every time I'm around you, I feel like I got to step my uh, happiness and energy game up. Oh, man, up. I can say exactly the same about you, like <laughs> literally. You know, uh, every time we see each other, it's... Uh, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> weird is probably the right word. That is true. <laughs> so Sebastian and I are here in Dallas for the Remarkable Practice uh, seminar. Yep. We so, so we see each other like basically like uh, I think I see you more than I see my family. Uh, I see you at the TRP seminars and then I see you at the UAC, at the UAC uh, set. events yep, as well. At the yeah. UAC events, correct. Um, so for the people that uh, don't know who you are. Uh, tell the audience a little bit about, uh, you know, where you came from, what sure. you're doing. Um, I graduated in uh, 2001 from Life University. Mm -hmm. I've lived in Puerto Rico all my life. So I <clears throat> graduated, went to India for three uh, weeks and then came back and started my practice, basically. Um, Tell me a little bit about the India trip. Well, actually, no, I'm sorry. Give me the, <laughs> give me the, give me the background because I'm interested in the India trip. That's intense. That's intense trip, man. Yeah. I've never been so sick in my life, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Was, well, finish the right, intro right, and right, then right, we'll right, get right. to that. So, uh, yeah, I started my practice. Um, I remember giving a talk uh, at my mother's uh, beauty parlor. Yep. Or um, I don't know how you call that here. Uh, Hairdresser. Uh, right. Beauty parlor. Right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, there were supposed to be like, you know, 12 people, 15 people, you know, and do a talk and just recruit patients there. And mm -hmm. I got there with my spine, my tripod and my autonomic nerve system, you know, 20 pound. Um, uh, how do you call that? Like uh, when it's a framed, framed autonomic nerve oh, system, yeah, 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 right? Yeah. 20 pounds, that thing was so heavy. Anyways, I put everything there and there's three people. Right. So the owner of the beauty parlor, my mother and myself. Yeah. I'm like, all right, let's this is it. it. Let's let's do it. And that was it, man. That was the start of everything. Yeah. She um she couldn't like even grab the blower. So she was like losing a lot of her capabilities. So had great results with chiropractic care. You know, they talked to everybody, all the clients, so then word started to uh, go and that's how everything actually uh, got ignited. Nice. So in uh, 2000, what city? What city? In Guaynabo, in okay. Puerto Rico. Okay. Yeah. 2010, uh, they recognized me uh, locally as Chiropractor of the Year nice. in Puerto Rico by the Doctors' Choice Award. So it's like medical doctors and orthopedic and neurosurgeons like vote. Yep. And they've only given uh, that. Uh, award twice so both times i was um nominated and the first time they gave it to me so i was pretty cool nice then uh life university recognized me uh, when when was the other time that they recognized you said it happened twice you and one other time yeah what year so was that 2010 no what year and then was the 2011 other one? oh i yeah. was hoping i was hoping the other one would be like 1998 no. and then you could you could say that you were the uh you could really say that you were the chiropractor of the millennium oh, if you're the only wow, one that's that been in the good. 2000s you that know? was good that was good so damn no no it didn't work no. out that way <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah. yeah so then uh life university later on um recognized me as one of the chiropractors responsible for developing chiropractic in spanish-speaking countries especially in brazil and argentina mm -hmm. so um i think you know dr eddie eddie diaz yep. we uh, uh we're coaching together um many um argentinians and brazilians and really took in those uh markets and, and went there and traveled a lot man i remember those years where we were just coaching them help them develop and um then they just uh went on their own and they got they develop their own coaches now they're coaches within themselves and yeah that was pretty cool nice and uh what else so right yeah. now you've got 
the office in uh, Puerto Rico. Yep. Still the same office? Yeah, we yep. got two doctors working there also. So we're three doctors nice. working there. And, and then um, now you're bringing all your uh, Spanish flavor to the U.S. I, oh, yeah, man. After that hurricane hit, shh, we uh, I found out that all my eggs were in one basket. So mm. I'm like, man, I need offices outside Puerto Rico. You know, I, I need a plan B. Yep. So, and C. Plan B and C. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the hurricane was a big hit, man. That was, uh, I don't know. I've never had like like a hardship in my life, you mm -hmm. know, like like. Yeah, you've you've lived a real blessed life. So yeah, I I think so, man. <laughs> I Absolutely. Like, if you know Sebastian, <laughs> you, this is like if you ever seen anyone. <laughs> Maybe you don't know anyone who's lived this blessed of a life, but you can tell <laughs> as Sebastian just floats on by, like in in his world, like. <laughs> oh man, I'm glad you see it that way because ha it hasn't actually felt that way. Well, it's like your choice, like it's what you choose to show to the world. Yeah. yeah. Well, All right, so yeah, let's hold true. on before we get into the hurricane because right. that's a, that's a talk I definitely want to have. Um, uh, so you own a couple of practices here in the United States. You're yep. opening another one uh, this year. Uh, but I do want to go back to the India uh, trip because when sure. I graduated from college or from chiropractic school, I went to Las Vegas for uh, a month to be a professional gambler. And I have a feeling Holy that my ex my experience was probably not as cool as yours in India. So I well, want to hear about this India one. Dude, that's a great story. <laughs> I mean, what's the name? What's the episode of that podcast? You talk about that story because I want to hear it. So, uh, yeah. So that was my uh, first time I went to India. I've done like 20 six mission trips in this last 18 years yep. or actually no because I, I i did four as a student so um yeah i've done a, a i've traveled the world literally just doing mission trips and that uh first india trip was just so crazy so crazy man it was so crazy india is so hardcore so intense so many people such a different culture i've traveled a lot and haven't been anywhere uh, everywhere but I've been places, I've seen, I've been in third world countries, mm -hmm. I've seen poverty, but not to that level of intensity. And yeah. just, you know, offering something that is so new and unique and so unknown to them as a chiropractic adjustment. They mm -hmm. only know like these massages that they do, which I received one and was mm -hmm. the most, the craziest thing I've ever, <laughs> ever received in my life. I really? still remember it. Yeah. Um, and they do manipulate. They crack everything in your space, move every articulation while they're doing all this massage. So yeah. they have, they, they, they move bones, but they yeah. don't know what an adjustment is. They don't yeah. like a specific adjustment. So we're there and um, it was super well received, of course, but I, I, you know, we were staying in this ashram and people were walking three days, making wow. a line of two days long to receive a three minute service just because they you know were reading the promotion we which was you know these doctors from america have this gift they want to give you through their hands and yeah. you know come and receive so basically they were they were coming it was it was a very humbling very humbling uh, experience um but yeah we were we got all got sick they were like yeah it's okay you can drink this water you know it's filtered but it wasn't so mm. You know, I haven't been that sick in my life, yeah. but at the same time, um, I haven't had uh, an experience of of just being in that, um, you know, that the service high, you know, that runner's high. Yeah. You get the same thing when you're serving and when you're serving, you're serving, you get in this blissful state where magic happens. I mean, literally just you touch people and just by having them move, everything just starts changing. So it's yeah. it was very humbling intense uh i said i'm never coming back to india and then four years later i was there again <laughs> nice hope you so, didn't get sick that time no no that's good. um so what you, you, got, got, you, got, you have got, got, I, I i don't know as much or how much you've traveled but i always seem it always seems like you're traveling somewhere um you surf a lot surfed all over the world like where where have your uh, favorite spots been um just traveling wise um where i can surf and serve so basically that's that's what it is surf and surf all right, where can we go? And yeah. and Indonesia is amazing. Um, you know, boat trips with uh, Billy, you yeah. know. So we always uh, find some time to go and take care of people and That's great. just surf. So yeah, then we get, you know, we get up early, surf, 
Then uh, we serve the rest of the day, and then at the afternoon session, go back to the water, <laughs> nice. serve some more. <laughs> nice. Everybody's happy. Everybody wins. <laughs> what uh, What's the What's the biggest thing that surfing has taught you about life? Um, that that I it made me realize I had a double standard. The way I tackled uh, surfing was very different than the way I was tackling my relationships, for example. Uh, not my office. I found that my office and my surfing reflected the same standard, same um, modus operandi. Uh, but not in relationships, man. That was, uh, that was a tricky one. Yeah. And uh, it was, it's been a journey. It's still a journey. It's always going to be a journey. Are you single right now? Uh, I'm dating. I'm dating. dating uh, yeah. Always dating. She's here, actually. She, Is she? she, That's she great. came. <laughs> That's great. So I have this. I have this theory. Um, I've always had this theory, but uh, Sebastian is like I didn't realize he was my case study until I uh, until I met you. And so I always had this theory that that people that that grow up really good looking uh, always have a harder time. It's the it's like they have too many choices in life, so they have a hard time like picking one choice because they worry that they're missing out. Yeah. Then I met you and I was like, oh, yeah, I was right the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and you know it because it happens to you, too. So come on. So, uh, yeah, absolutely, man. You feel like that whole that whole uh, uh, people walking three days in India. Like the last time I saw that is like watching women follow you around Las Vegas. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, yeah, the, the, there's a super duper really bad thought that is. You know, you're with somebody which is great, and then you think, you know, am I, am I being content? I mean, uh, am I, um, how do you say that word in uh, in English? You know, uh, am I, you know, is this it? Is this all? I'm mm -hmm. sure I'm gonna get something better. You know, there's always gonna be something better, right? Yeah, there's a whole world out there. Yeah. 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 So uh, that thought would just come in, and then it would just, you know, s sabotage the whole thing, and then. Yep. Also, it was a um, vulnerability issue. Uh, there was, uh, there is great power in vulnerability. Yeah. So when you, when you have emotional intimacy with somebody, you decide to open up and become vulnerable. That's mm -hmm. when you actually you can step in into this unknown and grow into that relationship and develop that character. So that's you, what I'm. That's yeah. what I'm hoping this podcast will be. This uh, interview. Awesome, man. It will. The vulnerability yeah. will open up. And Absolutely, we'll grow you can, into it. dude. I've, I've read so <laughs> many books, and you can read so many books. But when the time comes to practice all that, it's literally on your relationships, and yep. that's how when you find out, you don't know Shiwala. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> you can say shit. It's fine. All right, yeah, you don't yeah. know Jack shit yeah, actually. So um, all right, annoying. so I feel like we're 10 minutes in. We've already covered a lot. We've covered relationships, right. uh, serving the world. <laughs> 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 what is surfing taught to you? Uh, so let's get into, into practice. So you, uh, you start your practice, what did you say? It was 2001? 2001, yeah. 2001. Um, so when you started, did you start off with a bang? Did you start off fast? Or was it kind of a struggle getting going? And then... Um, yeah, um, go I was such an arrogant bastard man it was like so i know it all mm -hmm. i've been to all these seminars i read all these books i know it uh you don't have to tell me what to do uh i judge i judged uh coaches at the time of being people that just wanted my money mm -hmm. and wanted to take advantage of me yep. rather than seeing for what it is which is a huge resource of accelerating you know success in my life but i didn't i judged it um so, so you took you took the path that i did which was i i'm i'll figure this out right instead of just like no paying worse. for the fast pass no dude worse at least you had you were humble enough to admit that you haven't figured it out so you had to figure it out no i was oh, like, you already had to figure oh, it out i have it all figured out yeah, yeah. i know what the fuck i'm gonna do how i'm gonna do a consultation and how I'm going to convert people, and it's going to be all cash, no insurance, great. So still all cash, still no insurance, but that arrogance cost me $310,000 because I, I thought I had a wellness practice, but I really had an open the back door practice. Mm. People weren't staying. I was, you know, one-hour consultations, two-hour report of findings. Mm. You know, it was like... 
I was seeing 75 people in a week. Uh, I think it was like in the first year or something like that, which is, you know, whatever. But it's not about the numbers. It was, it was about the whole growth, like who you're becoming in the process. And it took me a while to yeah. recognize that that arrogant was just really was me being in my own way. Yeah. Basically, that's what it is. So finally, I when I started coaching was in 2004 so imagine um from three years into practice so mm -hmm. those three years of lost income but you know lost income means lost lives that i could have you know helped right. in a much broader deeper level anyways i think that you attract your tribe yeah so i know none of those people were um left off or they just took longer to reach me. Mm. I wasn't prepared for them. I got it. So now... What was the 310,000? That's a very specific number. Oh, because I, I, I just saw how quickly my numbers and my income and my retention and my eff effectiveness and efficiency grew. So I'm like, all right, so if I grew from 2004, 2005 this much, let me just uh, multiply that by three. I'm uh, assuming that I'm not going to grow again next year 2006 yeah. or seven yeah, right yeah. and um that's what it came up yeah. i mean it was so much money i'm like man so what you started coaching and that was really the trigger that yeah that definitely that yeah yeah i started um what was the biggest <clears throat> change in in the practice when you started when you started coaching with someone was it just getting better procedures in place or systems or headspace uh, yeah or? i just remember i remember um saying all right i need Shorter consultations, shorter report of findings, and a financial structure that is supportive of all families coming in. Yeah. I couldn't figure it out. I just didn't know that chiropractic was a, not only a philosophy, an art, and a science. I didn't know that it was also a business. Mm -hmm. And I... <laughs> I never took any course in business. I didn't read any book in business. I just got the classes that were given to me in school, which was great information. Plus, I did many seminars. Yeah. So I, I had some information, but no no business um, background whatsoever. Just small, basic. I mean, and yeah. chiropractic is not a small, basic business unless you see small, basic numbers. Right. And we were heading to greatness. I, that's where I saw myself. So yeah. I needed, you know, specific s procedures and stuff, you know, people around me. That's another one, man. Just building a team. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, oh, nobody taught me that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still learning how to build a team. Yeah. That, was, that, was, that has been was the, one of the hardest things for me to build the team that I have today because it's a reflection of you. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. so it's a matter of building up myself, building up my character and, and polishing and finding out, like, dude, like, people that don't know you think you're such an arrogant bitch, like, <laughs> and they don't even know you, you know, they don't even know me, then they know me, it's like, I liked oh, you. man. I liked you before I knew you. Thank you, man, yeah. I, I really yeah, appreciate so it. So it means you're, you've evolved, so you're good. Well, you know, I'm still evolving, <laughs> it's never there, but... Um, so, all know, right, so you, you, grew, you grew $103,000 that first year that you did coaching did that growth continue did you yeah uh yeah remember so like what give me that story so it, yeah just growing um steadily every year yeah and uh then the 2008 uh economy crash happened mm -hmm. and that's when we started really growing those were so, my best years. So actually. 2004 is when you started to get coaching. Yeah. So you were kind of putting all the procedures in place yeah. up until 2008. And then when the, cause that's when I, I started in O I started my, or I bought my first practice in 06, started my seventh, second one in 07. So that's when the economy really started to get shaky. And then 08 is when it yeah. kind of went off the cliff. And so I only ever knew a bad economy. Like, yeah. so, so I just thought that that's like what it was. I didn't know all these guys that talk about how easy it was in the eighties and the nineties. I'm like, man, it's always been kind of tough. Yeah. You know? I think the 80s and the 90s, it's just like it, everything was, there was a lot of money moving. So it was like, all right, yeah. whatever. I, I have spare money. Let's do this. Yeah. But, um, you know, I've lived through recession economies, right? Yeah. Through uh, 
the 2008 craziness, you know, where everything just crashed economies. Then we have the um, uh, 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 bankrupt economy in Puerto Rico mm -hmm. and healthcare thrives in those economies. Mm -hmm. So those, the, I don't see any problem with that. So we're fine. So now, tell me about the well. Tell yeah. me about the 2008. So like you said that oh, you really, just, you really yeah, exploded just, there. Yeah, what we was just the, went off. What was the, where were you at before that? Kind of like uh, collection wise per year, and then where did you go to over oh, the next man. year or two? Um, uh, man, I don't remember, Nick. I don't. I I have those. I actually have just that like in ballpark. my room. Just ballpark. I think uh, maybe we're like in half a million or something like that close to that and, and then, then we just started like every year was just like a hundred grand more a hundred grand more. like mm -hmm. we're really growing that, that what was the, the thing past. in the 2008 that that you thought what, what change did you make what did you add to the practice i think just it was just not knowing what was going on really i wasn't hooked into the collective craziness mm -hmm. i just didn't know it's yeah. like oh really economy is shit uh uh I don't know. I'm not seeing that in my office. Mm -hmm. You know, really? How come? You know, you know, I'm struggling and this and that. I'm like, mm, I don't know, man. Things are really good, actually. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't. I saw how my family business. They own a business in Puerto Rico that crashed yeah. really bad. So uh, what it was lasted. That? It was. Uh, it's an electronic store. Mm. So it lasted for five more years. A, a thirty plus year business in five years. God. Yeah. So I saw how the economy affected that yeah. industry and other yeah. businesses. Anyways, um, we grew, and then we're having our best year, and then the hurricane came. Mm -hmm. And then this was what year? 2017, 17? September 2017. Yeah. And when the hurricane hit, then that was a whole new experience for me because that's a catastrophe economy. Mm -hmm. Everybody is thinking about food, water, shelter, mm -hmm. diesel. That's it. Yeah. No health. Not even, um, I mean, the, the, not the medical doctors were, were struggling. The top cardiologist in Puerto Rico that sells, the, the guy that sells the most heart paces mm -hmm. was my uh, neighbor. We meet for lunch one day, took him out. Um, he's like, he, he takes me out. He wants to know what's up. And I'm like, well, you know, it's shitty. I'm struggling really bad. This is not good at all. How about you? I mean, you guys must be freaking awesome because everybody's having a heart attack right now, most mm -hmm. probably. He's like, uh, no, actually, I'm not. I haven't sold any heart pace, no heart pacers in the last two months. Yeah. I think one. And I'm like, so, so what's going on? He's like, so I call my main cardiologist and I say, bro, what's going on? You haven't, you know, you're not calling me to put any hard paces in what's going on. He's like, cardiology says, patients are calling me and asking me if they can postpone their open heart surgery for three months. Hey, doc, can I, will I survive three more months if mm -hmm. I don't do this operation? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, most probably. He's like, all right, I'll see you in three months. So <clears throat> catastrophe economies are a different ballgame. Uh -huh. So lessons from that, because I think... It was the hardest times in my life, but in terms financially and in terms of so much uncertainty, there was so much uncertainty, Nick. So much you could not control. Mm -hmm. There were people, hey, listen, hey, Nick, I want to do a talk in your, in your office, right? Because you want to give talks, you want to move the energy around. Mm -hmm. uh, no, <laughs> We're not, no, we don't have, we're, we're just, we're not doing any of that. Our corporate programs are all shut down. We, you know, we're not coming to work. Uh, no. Like people are just trying yeah. to survive. Yeah, they were just trying to survive. survive. Yeah. So I'm like. People uh, and business. Okay, so I'm like, all right, TV, let's go. Um, put me back in the program. Nope, all, all the programs are for radio, for emergency uh, stations, for uh, politicians to go up there and give uh, instructions. So there's we'll call you so i'm like okay so okay so then let's do patient dinners all right patient dinners hey everybody i'm gonna take you to this restaurant that has a generator <laughs> right. right right so they have generator they have food i'll invite you to eat dude one people showing up two people doing patient dinners mm -hmm. for two people bro 
and I'll still do it. Yeah. Hey, one life, I will still do it. I will still do it. one life. I remember doing a patient dinner one on one. That's it. We'll just sit at the table. That's it. We, we just, just had dinner. It's yeah. like, hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> we was, I was expecting 10 more people at least. Yeah. So well, it I was. Hope you, I hope you closed that one. Dude, um, no. Oh, man. That's no. No. They didn't. They, uh, okay, I'll go. It's just that I have to fix my roof. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for the insurance company to pay so I can fix this, so I can do that. My, yeah. You know, it's like, wow, right? Yeah. So, man, as I'm explaining to you, I'm like getting like very uncomfortable because it was very. Very uncertain times. Just give me an idea, um, just because, you know, in the U.S., outside of the 2008 economy, um, nothing nationwide has really happened that would have, like, affected everybody. There right. might be, like, a tornado in, right. like, a certain city that might yeah. wipe something out. But, you know, um, you know, there's been a lot of flooding lately, like, yeah. with hurricanes. But, um, but people go inland. They have right. room to, to yeah, go yeah. seek help right. inland. They get yeah. on a car. They get yep. two, three states up, and they're fine. Yeah. We live on an island. It's yeah. all contained. It's a blessing, but it's also in terms of catastrophe. Occurs. But just to give people some context on, like, like the day before your – or, like, let's say a month before the hurricane hit. Yes. You didn't know it was coming? No. Nope. Nothing? Like, Having the best you know, year, bro. Like, what what were you seeing per week visit-wise? Oh, we were, we were – we, were, we, were, we just broke uh, – either about to break or just broke 500 a week okay so 500 a week i did 40 bucks average 50 50 so uh twenty five thousand dollars a week in collections easy staff of of how many uh four at the time four okay four uh, and then you so you're five no three so ca's part of the four. three ca's three ca's uh -huh. one doctor and myself Got it. so okay. yeah so it was five, five. all right so then the hurricane hits and let's say a month after, because how long did it take until like things I, got back to normal? I underestimated the product. That was my first mistake. Yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, it's going to be two weeks. It's all right. Yeah. And no, it took a whole year. Okay. Full so year. let's say 90 days in, because that's probably when people started to get desperate. Because in the first 90 month, days I in, 90 days, like what no, were you 90 seeing? 90 days in, that's when the electricity came back. Okay. So let's say before that. So let's say like two months after the hurricane hit. Because that's a long time to be yeah. like without. Yeah, two months that you're right in the midst of, of the whole. Yeah. What? Um, that's a good. That's uh, a good date. What? What were you seeing per week? Oh then? no, man. Uh, from 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 having twenty twenty five grand a week to um, seven grand in the whole month that followed the hurricane. Wow. Seven grand wow. in the whole month, and then we doubled the practice on the second month to mm. to fifteen thousand. <laughs> So that's pretty good, man, with all yeah. the practice. Yeah. Still, you and know. And you didn't have to lay anybody off. Well, I had a part-time CA. She she laid herself off. Mm -hmm. She said, I can't be coming here. Um, I can't be using the car to yeah. drive this distance. I need to save that gas. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? Um, so, uh, yeah, but I consume my rainy day fund. I mean, mm -hmm. you have a rainy day fund to cover you for what? One, you know, three months, yeah. six months. I had it yeah. for six months consumed it all and then uh, i had to bail myself out and uh twice basically mm -hmm. so i put in from my own personal money so i could keep paying my my my, my employees because they have families they yeah. depended on me so i yeah. was like felt responsible for them and to keep my doctor also you know mm -hmm. I, it you know it was a vision man it's just, now i'm thinking about it if i if if i if I kept the vision alive, but not consciously. I just knew that this too shall pass. This is going to pass. And for every, and I know, because I know this, in my heart I know that for every really bad thing that's happening, an equally really good thing is on the other side of that. Mm -hmm. So just keep on keeping on. Just keep remembering what I read in the Wells of Life University. It's just really stuck still in my mind so i just kept going on real you know finally electricity came the day before the electricity came my generator which i ordered four months uh, you know back mm -hmm. one month before the hurricane i ordered a generator yeah and it came it came four months after so uh the day before i got my generator and then the day after we got power back <laughs> so now just in time yeah 
So now that's when things, you know, a little bit of sense of normalcy. We're yeah. going to practice in shorts, sweating, mosquito biting. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, man, it was, it was, uh, it was tough because, you know, when, when you're having the best year in your life yeah. and then everything comes to a stop and you have to apply everything you've learned about how the mind works because mm -hmm. everything in nature is giving you feedback that is broken, dead, and, um, and just sad. Every, every tree is down, every flower, there's no flowers, mm -hmm. all, all, no leaves in the trees. Now nature is all brown because it's leafless. Mm -hmm. Now I'm seeing parts of town I haven't seen before because they were, you know, there were trees that were blocking them. Yeah. So um, at the third month uh, of that craziness, we, I, I, I was like, all right, this is it, this stops. Um, I remember talking to my ex-girlfriend and, and just like, all right, this is the last night I'm going to bed pissed off. That's it. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to allow myself to go pissed off one more night, all right? <laughs> and today all this out. ends, tomorrow everything changes. So I woke up the next day and I'm like, all right, fuck it. I'm going to do a spinal screening on the uh, supermarket next door to my office, which mm -hmm. is like a boutique supermarket, very, very, uh, very uh, small. And remember, I don't like, I don't like calling myself a celebrity, but that's what people consider me in Puerto Rico. They see me on TV well, and yeah, all this like thing. You're, you're like, a, you're kind of like a national known person for health within, and chiropractic right within puerto rico um so yeah and um <clears throat> it's very humbling because i feel very responsible for for all that yeah. and and to make sure that people get the message so what happens is that now people are seeing me you know all sweaty mosquitoes biting me everywhere and as they're coming in, Nick, into the supermarket, I'm standing in their way so I to hand them the shopping cart. And as I'm handing them the shopping cart, I'm saying, so welcome to Cole, which is the owner, patient. Welcome to Cole Supermarket. Um, today's, uh, uh, today's soup of the day is lentil soup. And the special of the day is a uh, uh, full chiropractic examination in my office. I'm Dr. Sebastian Boni. I'm the chiropractor next door. So if you're interested in checking your spine and nerve system after, after all this hecticness, come stop by after your, you know, after your shopping here. And yeah. I, I, I had seven seconds you're right. <laughs> to do that. Right. So I've never heard of anybody handing out the shopping carts <laughs> to get the people into the booth. That's a good one. I it like was that. so uncomfortable, super humbling. And people, I, I, I remember people were like, aren't you the guy from TV? You know, like, <laughs> what the heck are you doing here, man? They have this thought that I'm like super successful and you shouldn't be struggling. No, man, I'm struggling just like you. Mm. And that's just part of what it, what it is right now. So yeah. this is what I, have, what I have to do. And that, Nick, totally changed my energy. It got me back into service. Yeah. And, um, and I realized that in this new energy, that's when I started realizing, holy cow, I'm, I'm watching the TV and the news every day. Mm -hmm. I've never done that. Okay. That's out. Holy cow. I'm, I'm reading the newspaper. Like, oh shit. No wonder why I'm, you know, engaged and hooked in this collective consciousness, in mm -hmm. this energy of this shit. I can't rise above it. I'm hooked to it. Yeah. So no radio, no TV, no newspaper. That has been a rule in my life, but all of a sudden, I fell into it. Mm -hmm. So I that that brought me like a like a contrast. That was out, and then just took massive action, massive action, just out there, spinal screens, and all of a sudden, opportunities started to to happen. Then we started attracting patients that could afford care, that had some spare money, that that wanted to get care. Yeah. Right. And then you know we started changing the whole thing. I would love to say that income went again to where it was real quick and uh, no you know a ye still i mean we had 2019 was definitely definitely much better than 2018 yeah um but still you know we we we're not pre we're almost pre hurricane numbers that's still great. almost two years after that's great though that you, like, oh, dude. you built it back you well because i would imagine 
Um, I don't know the numbers on it, but I would imagine a lot of Puerto Ricans oh, yeah. came to the U.S. I after mean, 250,000 people left the island. Yeah. And, and I would imagine that those are people that have the means exactly. to leave the island. Exactly. That's yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah. So um, how many people total are, it, like live there? Well, it was 3.8. Now it's 3.2, uh, 3.6. I'm sorry. And now it's 3.2. Got it. 3.3. Yeah. Um, so, so this, yeah. I, you were telling me that it taught you that you just had all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. So here's, and so when did you decide that you wanted to start yeah, to yeah, diversify yeah. it a little bit? So here's the thing, man, that when shit hits the fan in your life, where do you go? Where do you go? Where do you fall back? Where, where, where do you, where do you fall back? Do you go into security? You know, and I need to be, I need to feel secure and safe. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you go to your safe zone? Do you go back to what is known to you, what it's comfortable to you, what you can control? Or do you like stay naked mm -hmm. and vulnerable and just stay open just because you have a vision? Right. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. And even that vision was obscured that's how i landed with uh franson i will still remember to this day um we we shared a stage as uh, uh, dr franson and myself we shared a stage in live vision and uh we had a meeting at the when bar was this? oh man um like four years ago i think yeah. all the business is done at the bar yeah exactly <laughs> the best <laughs> that's, is the, that's the, the vision bar. that i always <laughs> have <laughs> so uh I'm like, man, I, 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 I'm, I, I need clarity. I remember saying to him, I, I need clarity. I, I feel that I've lost my vision. And it wasn't that. I just felt that way, but yeah. the vision was super clear. It was in my heart. It was just my head that was yeah. obscured by the craziness around the circumstances, which um, you either are part of it or you work yourself and take action a part of it. Yeah. So <clears throat> what happened was that I decided I chose unconsciously, man. I'm telling you, it wasn't a conscious decision. I just knew it was the right thing to do. It's like, no, you can't chicken out. You can't back out. Dude, you've been, you, 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 you can do this. People have, have gone through worse and, and they've gone through it. And then I'm like, okay, who, who has been through this? And then I couldn't find anybody. <laughs> right. I'm like, shit, uh, whatever. I'm pretty sure, okay, what, people, Trump, Trump lost it all. Shit, there you go. He's gone, he's gone through, and he's somehow made it back. I can do this too. So I had that belief, helped me out a lot, and met Joe Esposito, then the Align Life model, the franchise model, and all of the sudden I'm like, wait, I can leverage the franchise model to open offices in a different market, all eggs in one basket thing, yep. so I can have you know offices in the US. So it took me a year to evaluate all that, and really research into the people because I knew it made sense mm -hmm. business-wise to do that, but I really wanted to get to know the people. Like, yeah. who's the people behind the company? And I found that there were no, no, there was no uh, disconnect or incongruency. Yeah, it was all legit, man. And yeah. I'm like, all right, Joe, let's do this. So um, I franchised my office, my office, which I didn't need it to, but that was what allowed me to immediately ex create my vision, start yeah. making my vision reality in yeah. the midst of all the hurricane craziness. Mm -hmm. So I've learned that. Do you have, do you have like the vision, like statement that like, what was the vision? Yeah. Every, every, every year it's modified because I think it, every year you change. What is it right now? So I wrote it the uh, two, three days ago, mm -hmm. I sat down, I woke up early. No, before the, t the the day before the earthquake, there was an earthquake few few days ago, biggest er earthquake we had in 112 years, <laughs> man. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so uh, the so so we're we're transforming healthcare in Puerto Rico. So we have creating the aligned life, creating and putting offices around Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. um, we all have the same software. The software. Uh, allows to keep track of uh, of progress evaluations, how they rate themselves from one to five mm -hmm. in in different aspects of her, of the patient's area, not only pain-wise, but 
you know, like libido, you know, mm-hmm. and um, your emotional state, how you, how will you deal with stress, like all this subjective stuff. Yep. So measuring all that, bringing all that data to the government and saying, hey, I will, our model can save you millions of dollars in, you know, sickness prevention, in medication, and just qual- increased quality of life. Here's the, here's the data, here are the results, this is what, the, uh, what our model, the Align Life model brings. Give me an area of Puerto Rico, the sickest area of Puerto Rico, give it to us, and let us do a better, a better test, do it, show them, do it in you know, Puerto Rico. Yeah. Now, now we have, now we can show the world that Puerto Rico, if Puerto Rico did it, now we go to the UN and we're sitting, you know, next to the Dalai Lama, you know, Guy Rigman, Stuart France, so Nick also is there. <laughs> and we're just um, presenting this in the United Nations. So the, 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 eco- the world is, you know, has access to a system that uh, saves money and saves lives. So that's, great. that's basically what it is. Uh, don't ask me how that's gonna happen. But I'm sure that it's gonna happen. It's I, not I, gonna happen without the vision of it happening. Right. right. Yeah. So um, I'm and super I, excited. I, I think that you've got such a good partner in that in in Joe, and I and he has such a good partner in you because nobody likes him, but he's really smart, you know. <laughs> so it's <laughs> good that he. So, so it's good that he has somebody that other people <laughs> like. You know, that's a Dude, that's an important part. <laughs> uh, I love Joe. Man. Joe Esposito. He's, this guy is so amazing. He's I do love though mind. that uh, that you decided that you were gonna start your clinics in the U S and then you went and put them in two States, uh, they get hit by hurricanes. Exactly. <laughs> South Carolina. You're like, I've got experience with these hurricanes. We'll right, be fine. Yeah. right. So, uh, yeah, I have one right now in South Carolina and then, um, another one opening in the next three months in North Carolina. Yeah. That's on the build out phase right now. The doctor is all trained up and we're super excited. And then when did you open the one in, um, uh, was it South Carolina? Was the one first, year, the one, the a year ago. A year ago? Yeah. And how is that one doing? Uh, it's doing well now, man. Yeah. We're having the best month. We nice. just got a text last last night. Very nice. That the uh, doctors are cranking and really, really happy. They got momentum. And, that's, got momentum. The, and that's the uh, uh, the beauty of systems. Oh, yeah. And, Definitely. And training. And yeah. so it's like you're not in South Carolina. Right. Right? Yeah. But, so, but it's still cranking away. Yeah. So it's a matter of uh, having a business, not only a job, yep. but still, you know, uh, having a business that I know uh, a lot about, that I, I can control a lot in the sense of, of, of the knowledge I have of the business of mm-hmm. it. So I can, I can help the doctors. I've been through what they've been through. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's easy to relate to them, right? And, yep. uh, and help them through the process. So now, <clears throat> as you know, uh, we're recording this uh, three days after the biggest earthquake that Puerto Rico has had in it's like, man, 112 you years. Back on yeah. your feet. So um, I have to make a decision now because that he, uh, that earthquake, even though it's a 6.2, mm-hmm. which is big, it's not the big one we're waiting for. So there's a bigger one that that geologists know that's gonna happen, like the mm-hmm. California one. Mm-hmm. So. Um, we don't know, but it's very active right now. Mm. So, and you know, the economy, it's, it's been on this bull market, so it has to correct s- some time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, we're waiting for another dip in the economy, you know, time, hard times. Yeah. So it's like, all right, so what do you do, man? Again, I'm in the same place. Are you going to fall back into security? We were talking about this earlier. Am I going to go into, okay, I have this money saved up. Um, my family depends on me, you know, my parents. And uh, so do I fall back and not go into my fourth office Mm -hmm. or do I keep expanding the vision and trusting that that is what uh, God wants me to do? Because it's not my vision, man. It's God's vision through me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can't. I can't be holding God back. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, he's gonna fly Doesn't me sound like you got somewhere. A, doesn't sound like you have a choice then. <laughs> exactly. You know? He's like throwing earthquakes at you now to get you to open that fourth office. All right. So what are you gonna do? What All the people do? of Puerto Rico need to raise up and be like Sebastian. Just listen, so he'll stop giving us. Man, disasters. I need to raise up, man. That's what I need. I need to raise up. I need to raise up. I need to go. Um, 
as soon as I get back, um, I, I, I saw a video on Instagram where this kid is, they're interviewing this kid who apparently lost it all, the family lost it all, and the, 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 the news report is like, so what do you want to tell people? Like, oh, what are you feeling, man? You know, he's like crying. He's like, well, I wish, I wish I can help all the people that are going through what I'm going through, and I wanted to just end real quick, I, and I feel I cannot do anything, right? And I'm like, dude, like he's like seven years old. Like he has no money. He depends on the parents. He doesn't have a profession. Like he literally can only help maybe carrying some groceries somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Or just helping with water or whatever. I have hands. I have a knowledge that saved lives. I have a, a mission. I have a vision. I have money. I have resources. I know people. I have access. Like what the fuck are you doing, bro? Get moving. So, you know, when you say, you know, rising up, Absolutely, we we all need to rise up, and then we rise up, and then that's we need to keep rising up even more. Yeah, and focus back to focusing on on giving and serving, because every time you you take the focus out of that, ah oh man, it's painful. Because God is like, all right, here it is. You want to focus on yourself? Great, right, here you go, wham, and just bombards you with abundance. So you get even more comfortable mm -hmm. and more distracted and much more disconnected. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, all right, <laughs> bah! what's up? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, if anything, uh, this so podcast, uh, I would like to uh, tell you that you're listening. It's no coincidences that you're listening right now. So this is for you. Um, you're going through shit in your life right now. So the amount of uncertainty in your life is a direct reflection of how unclear you are of your vision. So just, I'm not saying to, you know, negate all that uncertainty. You can negate all the shit that's happening, but you can focus on that shit or you can focus on, on creating a new vision. And it doesn't have to be big. It can be a vision of tomorrow, everything changes, yeah. which was the vision for that night where it was the shift. Listen, I, I cannot have a vision bigger than tomorrow. So mm -hmm. you know what? Tomorrow, everything changes. How? I don't know. But tomorrow, everything changes. And then tomorrow came and everything changed. And then you get your ass out to the supermarket and you start handing out <laughs> carts. <laughs> Rem just remember the soup of the day. The soup. Of the day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So give me give me three uh, three tips for somebody because we all go through maybe not at the macro level that you did to where it not only affected you but it affected everybody around you. But everybody goes through those things in their life where somebody close to them passes away. Um, they you know fail in business. They fail in something and they get divorced. You know. Um, kid gets sick. There's, there's all kinds of bad things that happen to us individually. What would you say to, uh, what are three things that people can kind of focus in on, on trying to work through those, those things that are catastrophes in our own lives? Right. So that, that, uh, there is a reason for that. And the basic fundamental reason is to develop you into the person you need to become. So God can create the vision he has for you. God always wins. I think that's my, my opinion. God always wins. He's always going to realize the vision through you. It's whether you, you, he realizes or she realizes it through you early in life or just at the last moment of your life. So you get to enjoy more of the fruits of that vision being realized or you just enjoy in that split second before you die. All right. So... He's, he's always going to win. You know, the, the magic is going to go through you anyways. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of how much time you want to enjoy that and how much time you want the opportunity to uh, serve other people in that state and from that state and just watch how everything unfolds. I think that's the awesomeness about life, the uncertainty about it, the, the, the fun, the adventure, the... <gasps> You know what's going to happen like 2020. Right. I have all these goals, all this new energy, and then 
the earthquake comes. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> all right. That is true. I didn't right. realize that happened okay, just okay. like right after the New Year's. And I forgot. 2019 started with my dad going through the most hardcore general surgery and he almost died three times. So mm -hmm. my first two months of 2019 were super rough, super rough. So mm -hmm. I, it was the same thing. It's like, okay, 2019, new energy. I'm excited. Let's go. Let's conquer. Man, let's get the heck out of this hurricane. Leave it behind. I'm ready. <laughs> Boom, my dad. You know, I'm like oh, sitting yes. there signing papers, watching my dad just getting blood transfusions while, while they cannot find the broken artery inside. So it's like, yeah, sign here. I don't know. Yeah, we had to do some procedures. He may die. I'm like, you know, what the fuck? So uh, that was 2019, 2020, yeah. an earthquake. Yeah. So this morning, you know, we're in Dallas and they're like, yeah, this afternoon, um, there is a s massive storm coming and you know, Hey, do we need to know the evacuation? Cause tornadoes may hit. And I'm like, listen guys, don't worry about it. It's everybody's like, <laughs> everybody's going crazy. I'm like, Hey, <laughs> relax. Uh, you know, category five hurricane expert earthquake. Yeah. <laughs> this is why I'm not scared to be uh, doing this in front of this window. Cause I'm with you. Nothing bad can happen. <laughs> so, um, it's all, it's all. So you asked me three things, three things. Yeah, so that's one. Yeah. So just, just for those um, of you that don't know, Sebastian, he gives long answers. Yeah. Second one, <laughs> leverage, leverage, yeah. leverage your relationships. You, you have, you know, a lot of people that can help you. And sometimes those, those people come in the weirdest way, mm -hmm. just like you chiropractor that come in the weirdest way to help somebody else in a patient dinner. What a weird way to know a doctor is going to help you save your own life. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, leverage and, um, yeah, just uh, recognize that, you know, be humble. Be humble so you don't have to get humbled. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's it, man. That's At least good. for me, by for now and lately, that has been the lessons. Hasn't been easy, but just uh, keeping, you know, those morning rituals in the morning helps a lot. What's your morning ritual? So, uh, yeah. You gotta you gotta wake up early, man. Yeah. If you don't wake up early, uh, it's uh, it's not the same. What time do you get up? Um, so depending, so on summers I get up earlier than winters because the sun comes out later. Mm -hmm. So between five five thirty. It's not that early, but mm -hmm. for me, so from five thirty to eight, that's when I do all my things. So. Whatever doesn't get done at 8 a.m. in the day, it's not going to get done. Mm -hmm. Then it's just like practice, team, you know, getting new business and doing talks, TV, social media, etc. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, read the Bible, um, meditate, uh, read some some of the green book, green books, uh, just, just a passage, whatever. And then I took out the anatomy and physiology book. <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to uh, read that from a different perspective. Yeah. And it's amazing how we study all that. And it's like, whew, whew, now it's like, <gasps> holy cow, how the body separates the body in all these compartments. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. It just amazes me in a different way now. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I love the enthusiasm. It's like, you're like a kid reading the book. I like that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man. That's, That's it. Good. Read, man. Read. You got to read. Gotta you got to read. Gotta read. Gotta read at least one book a month. Hey, ten pages a day mm -hmm. is a three hundred and ten page book a month. There you go. Ten days, ten pages a day. So anybody can do ten pages without falling asleep. Come on. Come on. So you can read a book. The the years I read the the most books are the years that my income is the highest. Yeah. This year I read um, like uh, f uh, fifteen books and six audiobooks. So. What was the best one? Um the best one of the books that I read was I read uh, again for the second time the five love languages mm. and um, I'm reading right now why leaders eat last it's not a new book mm -hmm. it's like a foundational book yeah. I like it very much yeah. 
And then um, the audiobook I'm listening now, it's uh, Principles from the guy from Bridgewater. Bridgewater. Um, it's not Rick Sapio because that's uh, from the UIC. Mm-hmm. You remember the UIC yeah, business yeah. leadership? Yeah. Uh, but it has a name, a similar name. I forget now. That's right. It's on my name. In my but yeah, read. You got to read. Keep growing. All right, man. Nick. Dude. You always, <laughs> like I said, from the very beginning, you're like a kid. You just have like boundless energy. Um, you just been, you've been showing grit for the, like the last three years going through what you guys have been going through. And every time I see you though, I mean, I've probably seen you 10 times in those three years. And, um, and every time I see you, you're in a great mood, you're smiling, you're having a good time. You're trying to add value to people's lives. So I Thanks, always bro. appreciate seeing you, man. Well, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for putting this together. Yeah. And, um, Thank you for uh, just helping helping us just have uh, great tools, you know, yeah. to uh, use with our people so we can reach more people um, faster, quicker, just leveraging, That's leverage right. media. That's, right. That's, right. That's it, man. You I love it, the brother. name. That's right. Brother. I love the name. All right, man. I appreciate you being on. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Just because this episode is over doesn't mean you can't continue your path to a million dollar practice. We've created Chiropractic's most full service marketing agency at Leverage Media to help you reach $1 million a year fast and continue to grow. You can get a free strategy session with me absolutely free right now. To get started, go to GetMeMoreNewPatients.com. Once again, go to GetMeMoreNewPatients.com and we'll see you tomorrow on the Path to a Million podcast.